All right, welcome back. In the previous lesson, we talked about cleaning up our file, getting rid of extra junk, and uh, like extra junk like our modifiers and uh, vertex groups, as well as geometry that we don't need anymore. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about UV unwrapping and preparing the model for exporting it into Substance Painter. So one thing I want to do first with the UVs is just to check to make sure that we don't have any stretching on any of our textures. And an easy way to do that is I'm going to select everything, go into edit mode, select everything, and I'm going to hit U for unwrap. And then we'll take a look at our UV map. And one of the nice things about this method of doing individual panels is you rarely get stretching. So it looks like I don't see any real stretching issues here, which is good. Everything's laid out nicely. Um, and I've created two shaders ahead of time. And they're both just checkered shaders. One's for the interior colors and one's for the exterior colors. So I just have a going from the UVs through a checkered texture and then into an emission shader. And if we look at the model, and you want to take some time looking at it close up, and what you're doing is you're looking for, one, are the squares all roughly the same size? And we can see here they're not, and that's probably because I didn't apply scale to them all. So if we do this, go into edit mode again, select everything, and here I go to UV, average island scale. And I probably shifted some stuff around. Let's take a look at that again. And yeah, that's definitely better. So are the, the questions are, are the squares the same size-ish? And do you see any stretching on any of them? In other words, do they all look like squares? And they all look like squares to me. So just another confirmation that we're not getting any stretching in our textures and everything's gonna map nice and flat without any distortion. All right, the next thing I wanna think about is how to organize this for Substance Painter. And for that, I'm gonna quick jump over to, well, let me get out of this first and talk about this for a second. So here I have this house. And on this house, I have three textures. I have a roof texture, a brick texture, and the walls and window texture. So these are my shaders. Substance Painter, when you import this house into Substance Painter, it's going to translate these shaders into texture sets. And why is that important? So if we look at the model as it's brought into Substance Painter, here's the house. See, it comes in without any of those colors. But it does come in with texture sets that correspond to the shaders in Blender. So we have brick, roof, walls, and windows. And the, the nice thing about breaking your model down into texture sets is that by clicking on these, you can hide things. You can mask out large portions of your model uh, to make work easier. So for example, if I brought this all in as one single shader and I wanted to maybe paint under this roof on the interior, I couldn't do it. It'd be very hard to mask. Substance Painter doesn't have a great masking utility, but if I bring it in as different texture sets, you know, I can hide the brick part, I can hide the windows, I can work on this part of the model without all that other stuff in my way, and then I can do the same thing with other bits. I can isolate and work on things without things getting in my way. So we need to think of that, or at least keep that in mind while we're working uh, to make, while, while we're planning our export into Substance Painter. And to that end, I've created two shaders. One is called, you know, ME109 exterior, and one is called ME109 interior. And right now they're just that texture, that checker texture that we were using before. But what I've tried to do is I've tried to figure out, okay, what, what's gonna be hard for me to paint in Substance Painter if I can't get past something else? So obviously the, the cockpit's going to be tough to paint. Oh, it seems like I missed a couple. These should really be in my interior collection. And they should be this color. So I'm just going to link those materials. So everything inside the cockpit should be that blue. Anything that um, is going to be hard to paint, perhaps, like I thought maybe the exhaust ports in the back of the engine would be hard. The wheel wells, I swear, the wheel, wheel, the wheel covers I've split in two. So I've got the exterior shader on the outside and the interior shader on the inside. And I've done the interior of the wheel wells as an interior color also. So that once out, also in the radiators, those are also a different interior, quote unquote, interior shader. And what this is gonna let me do, is gonna let me in Substance Painter basically hide all the green stuff and then just focus on the blue bits and vice versa. So that's one way to isolate things in Substance Painter. Another thing you wanna think about, and I've illustrated here with the canopies, is Substance Painter has the ability to uh, throw paint on things based on their UV islands. Uh, so if you want a really crisp line between two pieces, so for example, on the canopy, we're going to have a piece of glass here, and on the inside, we're going to want to have the interior color, and on the outside of the canopy, we want to have the camouflage color. An easy way to do that in Substance Painter is to create uh, seams, UV seams, where you want the paint to, to, to be. So in Substance Painter, we can literally just go, okay, I want to put 
you know, paint on everything that I'm selecting here, and it'll throw the interior paint on it, and it'll give us a nice crisp line. We won't have to manually sit there with a paintbrush and paint things. So it's just one more thing to think about while you're doing your UVs is, is there some place where I want a really crisp line, where I want to be able to just throw something on one side of an object and throw a different color on the other side of the object. And that's another thing to think about. Uh, another thing to think about is how the um, various bake maps are going to affect your model. So, for example, in Substance Painter, one of the first things we do is bake, uh, you know, um, normal maps, bake ambient occlusion maps, thickness maps. The ambient occlusion map is going to create dark shadows anywhere there's two objects that are close together, which means that underneath, for example, this gun pod or underneath this, this adapter here on the belly is going to create a big black shadow. Uh, which is fine if we're always going to model the airplane with the gun pod, but if we wanted to have a model with or without the gun pod, we wouldn't want that shadow there. So what we need to do is we need to separate the gun pod from the aircraft physically before we export it. Now I've already parented all of the gun, part, uh, gun pod parts, including the underlying shrink wrap, to the barrel, and my units are set up in metric to meters. So if I hit the G, the Z, and the negative one key. It's gonna move the entire gun pod down. And that way when I bake ambient inclusion, it's not gonna create a big black shadow here. Now, another thing I think I wanna think about doing is if I'm looking at the plane from the bottom and I'm texturing, I'm doing rivets, I'm doing stenciling, looking at it this way, this gun pod's really in my way uh, for detailing this panel. So I also, not, in addition to moving the gun pod down, I wanna move it forward. So G, Y, oh, sorry, G, Y, two, uh, G, Y, negative two maybe. I want to move it forward, so GY negative 2. All right, and that way that frees up my view from the bottom view to work on this panel, and I'm not occluding anything. So from the side view, in fact, I could even move that down another one so that it's not in the way of the propeller. So the idea is we're going to create kind of an exploded view of the aircraft with the idea of moving things out of the way so we have a clear view of everything else. We want to be able to look at it from the top and not have anything included, bottom, side. Uh, for control surfaces, say the ailerons here, I'm going to move them straight down. And you notice I'm moving them in just units of one meter or two meters. That way, it's, I'm, I'm not just dragging it down. I'm, I'm specifically moving it one or two meters. That way, I can put it back exactly where I need to put it back later. Now, the control surfaces, by moving them straight down, if I look at it from the top, it still looks like it's in place in orthographic mode. So that way, when I do my camouflage painting, I'm not trying to guess where a line goes. And the same thing from the bottom. If there's any kind of weathering, I don't have to worry about continuity between the panels. But from a painting on the side view, moving it down lets me get in here and paint inside the wing edge, it lets me paint like the leading edge of the aileron. You know, these parts would be hard to paint otherwise. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the outer flaps. And I'm gonna move them down a little further than the ailerons. I mean, they still look okay from the top and bottom. You wouldn't know because it's orthographic, but this way they're not touching each other and I can paint the inside edges of both of these without things getting in the way. For the flaps, I'm gonna move, these are slit flaps, so there's a top and bottom. So I'm gonna move the top ones up two, right? And that's not in the way from the side. And I'm going to move the bottom flap and its piece down maybe like four. So that again, they're not in the way of the sides of the outer flaps. But from the top and bottom, everything looks like it's all nicely lined up. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with my air filter. I've already parented the pieces of the air filter together, so I'm going to hit GZ, negative 2. Let's see if that's in the way of anything. It's not in the way. Maybe I'll move it forward just for... So GY, negative 3, just to get it out of the way. Propeller is another one. Because we're going to be able, we need to be able to paint in here to somewhat, and it would be hard to do inside the propeller hub. So I'm just going to take a second. I'm going to run through. I don't know. If there's too much more. Um, maybe the bottoms of the radiators. I can move them down. Now I want them still in place from the bottom view, but you know I do want to be able to paint in here. Remember, this blue stuff is the interior, so you can imagine that that stuff's not there. That needs to get moved to the interior collection, All right? So that would not be in our way when we're painting. Landing gear is something else. We're gonna have to move that down. And I've already parented all the bits of the landing gear together just temporarily so I can move them as a unit. So I'm gonna move those down maybe three and then maybe forward because I need to be able to look at the top and bottom of them. Maybe move them back. I don't think they'll be in the way of anything there. They're well below the plane. Um, this just gives us the ability to, to paint all around this object without it interfering with other stuff. All right. Uh, same thing for the drop tank. So this is also already parented to take everything it needs with it. 
So I'm going to move that down, maybe four, and I'm going to move it forward four because I want to be able to uh, move it forward maybe one more. I don't want it over the nose there. Maybe we'll move the prop forward even further. Yeah, so moving that drop tank gave me access to all these panels and then this adapter piece here. I've also parented um, these pins and the underlying shrink wrap together so I can move this as a unit and maybe I'll move that down one and back six, maybe seven. All right, that'll be out of the way, top and bottom and side. And it'll give me the ability to paint this in detail, stencil it, and, and now the whole bottom of the airplane is free from anything that would be in my way. You know, I'm free to paint whatever I need there. Right, I don't see anything else right now. All right, so if we unhide our stuff, so everything's visible. We've kind of blown everything apart. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could maybe move these elevators up too, maybe. That way it gives you the opportunity to paint in here without uh, a problem. I'm going to leave the rudder where it is. All right, now that we've done our exploded view, we can start thinking about uh, setting up the UVs and the texture sets for Substance Painter. So let me focus on the cockpit first. So these are all our blue bits, all the interior pieces, or all the parts that have interior paint on them. Some of them, like the landing gear covers and the cockpit, have both texture sets or both shaders on them. So if I select everything, select one of them as the primary, go into edit mode, and I'm going to just select the face of one of the blue pieces, and then inside the shader, I'm going to hit select. And that's going to select all the faces that have that same color. And if I hit U, unwrap, it's going to unwrap those. And if I hit control I, it's going to pick all the green pieces, you know, the exterior paint, and I'm just going to move these out of the way. So I don't need them for right now. We're just working on the interior paint. And let me hide the cockpit for a second. And I'm interested in the instrument panel and the gun sight because I want to make these UVs bigger because uh, we're not going to see a lot of detail through the windows with the pilot in there, but we might see some of the instruments and I'd like to have better resolution there. And the gun sight's a fairly prominent bit of the canopy because it sits up above the glass line. So I'm going to make all these things three times bigger uh, just to give us more resolution there. Now, if we unhide and we select everything again, go to edit mode. Now, if I pack this again, hit control P to pack it, you can see Blender does, it packs it in, but it's got lots of wasted space. So I use a third party add-on. It is called UV Packmaster, and it does a really good job of really filling in the gaps. And there's all kinds of, there's videos on, on, on how to use it. Right now we're just gonna to touch on it a little bit, but it uh, will really make the uh, density of your UV layout much higher, which means better resolution because you're ha not having wasted space. So I wanna click on pack, but I also wanna make sure that I click on fixed scale because I've scaled up the instrument panel and the gun sight to a bigger size. I need to click on that, otherwise it'll resize everything. So I click pack. Because, because I said fixed scale, it's going to waste some space, but it will pack stuff in really tightly. And then there's room to add stuff later if we need to. So I made actually, maybe we could play with it and make it a little bigger and pack it again. Let's see if we can get even more. Yeah, so because I'm saying fixed scale, it's just going to try to fit it in. So I was able to get a little more density there. I've got a nice size instrument panel and my gun sights are bigger scale too. So I'll have better detail on those. All right, so that is the texture set for the interior. We're just going to have just the one uh, zero to one UV space. And let me move these pieces back to the ME109 collection so that we're just dealing with the exterior paint. And I'm going to hide my interior and I'm going to show my exterior. All right, and we're going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to select all my parts, go to edit mode, and I'm going to select the exterior colors. So now I'm just working on the green bits and not the blue bits. So if I can control I, these are the blue bits. I can just hide those because these are really parts of this. What you're seeing here is like the underside of the wheel well and the interior of the canopy. So we do not want to re-UV map these because they're part of the other texture set. So if I select everything and now I hit U to unwrap this. So I'm just out, I'm just unwrapping the exterior pieces See, it packs in everything, uh, but everything's in the zero to one space. 
which means that our texture is not going to be particularly detailed. You can see how small the propeller is or how small these wing panels are. So what I want to do here is in Packmaster, I'm going to take off a fixed scale. I'm going to leave rotation enable, which means that uh, Packmaster is at will to flip things around uh, to get them to fit better. Um, if you're doing something that has a directional to it, like maybe wood rain, you might not want to do that, but we don't care. And then I want to go to the tiles and pick the number of tiles. So maybe we'll say um, eight. All right. Now if I say pack, you can see it's working. All right, I paused it there for a bit. It only took a minute or two. Um, you can see how it's really spread out our UVs over eight tiles. So we're going to get some really good resolution now. You remember how small those, those propellers were before. So there's a prop now. It takes up a lot more space. So this should give us some good texture density. Um, if it's not enough, we can always make it bigger. But I would think eight should be plenty. Um, so like there's a wing panel there and it takes up maybe, you know, not maybe less than a quarter of the size, but um, it's now a, a reasonably good size piece inside the uh, inside that UDIM. All right, so that is done. Our UVs are laid out and we should be able to take everything here and export it into Substance Painter. So let me grab everything and I'm going to go to File. Actually, let me save first. File, Export, and I'm going to export as an OBJ. And you want to make sure that you do selection only. Actually, do I have my internal? I'm going to double check. I don't know if I turned my inside as a back on. I did not. So turn the interior back on because we want that exported as well. All right, so let's try that. I'm going to go File, Export, Export OBJ. Make sure selection only is clicked. Otherwise, you'll export everything in your file. Um, you may or may not want to do apply modifiers. If you have really high density subdivisions or lots of modifiers, this may not be good for you. But uh, for this model, I think it'll work fine. I'm just going to call it BF109 as my export and click export and just let it run. All right, the export finished. So let's just save our file one more time and let's bring back Substance Painter and we'll create a project for our airplane. So new and I'm going to select my object, set my size, Blender once, OpenGL, and we're going to preserve UV tiles. So that's good. And we are going to click OK, discard our old one. Right, and there we go. It is imported successfully into Substance Painter. All right, so I think I'm going to stop the lesson here, and then the next lesson will be really dedicated to Substance Painter. So at this point, you should be able to get your models ready for Substance Painter, Painter unwrapped, um, exploded view like this so we can you know paint things easily. Um, and then once you're in Substance Painter, we'll go to the next lesson, and we'll talk about actually you know baking and, and putting down layers of textures. All right, I will see you there.